This video is going to be a film study look at Kyle Hamilton's performance in the Ravens' Sunday night football win over the Chargers. Yet another week where he stacks up plays that illustrate his versatility, athleticism, burst, and ability to remove options for NFL offenses at the point of attack. Across multiple locations, I thought Hamilton had an impact when the Chargers had the football. Of course, they were only able to score on two possessions out of 11. Additionally, his, his mention on the broadcast by the announcing crew was perfectly synced up with a sequence that illustrates his versatility, his ability to make plays at or near the line of scrimmage, and then cover downfield. So if you're someone who believes in the, the NFL script that's handed out and the announcers had knowledge prior to that Kyle Hamilton was going to make those plays, there you go. Uh, we're really blessed to have Kyle Hamilton on the team. It's it's not hard to predict him playing well at this point because he does it every week. Do other teams' fan bases know it? And are you seeing them talk about how great Kyle Hamilton is on social media? Probably not. They've got their own team to focus on. But I can guarantee you that opposing teams, coaches, and players know where he is pre-snap, number one. And number two, are seeing on film reasons to avoid going at him. We're going to take a look at eight plays from Sunday Night Football, primarily involving Hamilton. He had six tackles, two tackles for loss, one pass defensed. Played a role in a a great DB group on Sunday, if you ask me. Arthur Millette, Marcus Williams, Geno Stone, the outside corners as well. Held Justin Herbert and the Chargers to 4.2 yards per play. Two scores in 11 drives, like I said. In the run game, the Chargers only averaged, the, the running backs, I should say, only averaged 3.07 yards per carry. Herbert had the 35-36 yarder that kind of makes their rushing stats look normalized. But their running backs got nothing accomplished. Also, in the pass game, it took Herbert 44 attempts to generate 217 passing yards. An incredible performance by this defense against an offense with a significant amount of talent. Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Justin Herbert, etc. All of those DBs played well. I want to illustrate Hamilton here just because a, it's fun to watch the film of him. And, and B, we were seeing so, – this is a new thing for us to have this physically overwhelming, fast safety who can take on blocks and win at the point of attack and then, oh, by the way, cover downfield against speedy receivers like uh, Guyton. Let's get to the film, and we'll start off with the first possession. Actually going to kind of highlight uh, Brent Urban here. Kyle Hamilton's lined up in a typical safety position. Third down run into the boundary. They're going to get the first down. Actually, a nice job by Brent Urban, who does a fantastic job as a five technique, meaning outside shade of the tackle, inside shade of the tight end. Also have Van Noy up at the top. Hamilton gets involved late. Just using this one to lead off the film study so that you see the different ways he's lined up. It's not all at the nickel position in terms of him being involved against the run, against the pass, whatever, whatever the offense is running. Kyle Hamilton is able to have an impact, make plays, or in this case, at least limit them to a short gain that, unfortunately for us, converts a first down. All right, we get into the actually devastating ability that Kyle Hamilton has against perimeter plays, which we saw last year in 2022, his rookie year, starting off in Carolina. This is a second possession sweep. I think he identifies the play pre-snap. I think he's communicating to Marcus Williams and some of the other guys. I wish that we avoided the uh, the little too small signal post-snap. But um, nonetheless, Keenan Allen, a big, physical, strong wide receiver, asked to pin down on the nickel, in this case, Kyle Hamilton. And it's an overwhelming win in our favor. You can see the edge is there. If Kyle Hamilton doesn't fight through that block because of his physicality, his size, and commitment, that the edge is there for this run play for Davis. Quick little guy who's a returner slash receiver. End zone angle, same play. This is a second and eight. So it's an important situation, if you ask me. You can see he's just given a signal to Marcus Williams. They appear to be give, mirroring signals. I'm not sure exactly what that is. One, one could be run, not sure. But head up into Keenan Allen, totally annihilating all the, the angle that Allen had and makes the tackle for loss. And he's right in this case. Allen and then Davis was too small. Very next play, third and 10. He's lined up as the nickel to the top side. We're going to blitz him off the edge. I think Queen and Hamilton blitz. Like I said, third and 10, second possession. And we kind of drop Van Noy. 
I wish Oway and Matabike were kind of still playing football here, but he's able to pressure the quarterback. One of a number of great plays by Marcus Williams, if you ask me. Oway, to me, kind of leaves this running back, shouldn't let somebody just cross his face and be totally uncovered. Great play by Marcus Williams downfield as Kyle Hamilton is converging on Herbert along with Clowney. And we end up getting a stop. Third possession. This is going to be the great coverage example on a second and 17. I think we just got to sack the play before that was split between Matabike and Travis Jones. Second and 17. He's covering Guyton, who's pretty quick, obviously. This is this is the type of ball that a quarterback thinks he can complete against a six foot four, 225, 235 pound nickel safety hybrid, whatever Kyle Hamilton is called by people, but great coverage by him. Additionally, I think he's playing this in a manner that reflects he understands where his help is. He's kind of playing on the back hip here because I think he knows he's got help to the inside with Marcus Williams, and then he has a feeling that this route's probably going to come back to the sideline, so he'd like to be on the the outside hip, the sideline side, I guess you could say. I think Marcus Williams is the guy who ends up getting the pass defense, but Kyle Hamilton's there as well. Beautiful play. End zone angle, same play if you want to check it out one more time. Chargers were able to be productive on the first possession, but thereafter in the first half pretty much got nothing accomplished. You can see it's a press position. He's right up on the line of scrimmage to the boundary. I thought we lined up Hamilton to the boundary a lot more on Sunday night football. I don't know how many times it was. My guess would be... I thought I saw it six or seven times, which is a, seems a little high compared to previous games. So maybe we did some things coverage-wise to reflect the fact that they throw so many screens to the boundary with the running backs, particularly Eckler. Don't think it's a bad throw by Herbert at all. Maybe it could be another yard or two out there, but Marcus Williams has it tracked either way. Number one, and number two, I think that's primarily because Hamilton understood where his leverage help was on that second and 17. Very next play, third and 17, this is the screen. He's just so patient when he needs to be. He, you look at the, the sweet play, the tackle for loss against Davis that I showed you. He attacks right now versus this play, it's, it's third and long. So he under, he's able to change gears. He's not just able to change locations on the field change assignments and techniques, he's almost able to change from attack mode to prowl mode, if you will, and then attack once he sees the ball in front of him. It's a beautiful play to limit the, uh, the, the screen to a short game and get another stop. We saw signs of all these things last year, particularly later in the season, but now we're getting it pretty much every single week. Third quarter, Again, he's lined up to the field now as the nickel. I do like the synchronized reaction between him, Roquan, and Queen. I think Queen is, is being a little bit heavy here in his movement. It's an RPO to the boundary. It's a first and 10. Kind of going to show you the sequence to set up uh, his play against Keenan Allen out in space. It's an RPO. I think the Ravens should run this play again. We used to run the double slants RPO, uh, particularly when Marquise Brown was here. Six-yard gain on first and 10. Again, I'm just setting this up for a play here coming up in a moment. Second and four ensuing play. And this is going to be a screen to the outside to Allen. Hamilton is the nickel to the field to trips. Somewhat similar setup by Herbert, making it look like there's a mesh between him and the running back. They're successfully getting the three on three out here. It's a great job by Marcus Williams. I feel like Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton next to each other play fantastic. Almost kind of reminds me of like two guards or, or maybe a guard and a small forward in a press situation in basketball. Williams is able to play on an inside-out angle with such commitment. Why? Because he knows Hamilton's going to win to the outside. Hamilton's going to, at some point, force the football inside. Yeah, it's a second and four. They get three yards out to the outside, but they're, they're almost force-feeding their best player the football. And there is space here, and it is a three-on-three. Because of Kyle Hamilton's ability to set the edge, if you ask me, to the outside, condenses it and creates a third and one. After this brilliant play by Kyle Van Noy, the Chargers are actually able to convert. Again, you see Hamilton to the boundary. This tight end ends up being wide open to the field. 
So this is something that we did more often, and, and I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it was to reflect the motion. Uh, this is a 12 personnel grouping by the Chargers, so our base defense on the field. So Hamilton's not the nickel here because there is no nickel. We have our base defense on the field. We only have four DBs on the field. It's a beautiful play by, by Van Noy, who just seems to be one of those guys that makes plays like this. Did it in the playoffs with the, with the Patriots for years. Always involved. Well, this play doesn't involve Kyle Hamilton necessarily. The Chargers are able to convert on the very next play. This is the drive that bridges the third and fourth quarter that I think includes the lateral pass. This is one against Keenan Allen at the nickel position up to the field now. And again, it ends up being a three-on-three. Three. They've set the running back to the field. So they're putting Roquan in some conflict to the field. And because we have Kyle Hamilton out there, we're just able to erase all that space. So what I'm saying is the running back, Eckler, is crossing Herbert's face. This would be our fourth defender who could potentially get out there to the field. But because of the run action, we have to at least respect it with Roquan. And Herbert's able to get the ball out in space to Keenan Allen. I thought it was going to be a double pass. I think the announcers even mentioned it during the play. It has to be frustrating when you get the ball to your best player out in space, three on three, twice on this drive. Once it's a three-yard gain on a second and four, and the other time Kyle Hamilton is able to tackle him for a loss. It just, if you ask me, limits option. He just limits options for the offense, puts them in a, in a situation where they have less choices, and most of those choices are bad. He's actually not necessarily involved in this fourth and six, two minutes left. This is the blitz by Arthur Millett where we're dropping both D tackles out. Ravens have used, I'll do a standalone video on this one to show the five or six or eight times that I have us using this in 2023. It could just as easily have been Kyle Hamilton that blitz. It seems like we do this with Arthur Millette when he's lined up to our right. The defense is right, the offense is left. Get a sack, I think, against the Steelers, and I believe a, a forced fumble against someone else. Maybe it was Tennessee. Uh, the ensuing week, but this is, seems to be something that we do once a game with Arthur Millett. In this case, we chose to do it on a fourth down in a big moment with two minutes left, not necessarily involving Kyle Hamilton. You guys let me know what you think of his play in week 12. I don't, I have really don't pay attention to rating services rankings, but in every situation that I saw, the only time where I saw him not be in perfect position, there was a pass in the end zone that I think was a little bit off track from a standpoint of where Herbert threw it. Potentially could have been thrown in a better location. Kyle Hamilton's everywhere, playing at an extremely high level for this team, whether he's at nickel, whether he's at half-field free safety, being used as a blitzer. You guys let me know what you think of his play in the comment section. I'm going to try to do a video just on that fourth and six call and illustrate when and where the Ravens have typically used it and why that blitz call by Mike McDonald was so anomalous or so different and unique because it went against the grain with our typical usage of that stunt. Appreciate you guys' time.